Hello lovely witches, this is Dawn from Aurora Dawn and this video is about, is a video response. It's the first time I've done this so I don't know the rules very well so I'm gonna just do my best. Anyway, there's this uh, channel that I just started subscribing to. This uh, witch has, uh, let's see, her channel is Intuition and Intention. And she made a video uh, asking people, how did you get into witchcraft? And uh, the name of the video is witch, as in, you know, witchcraft witch, what, when, where, why. So this is uh, my video response because I've uh, not done a video on how I got into witchcraft. I've talked a little bit about my past little bits and pieces of, you know, my background and where I've come from, but I've never really mentioned where, you know, where did I get the idea of witchcraft might be a, a decent or cool or my path even. So, uh, starting out, I, I mentioned before that when, and I'm not going to start at the beginning, but my parents divorced when I was two. My mother took me to LA, California. I was born in Texas. And we moved to Los Angeles and she started getting into uh, spiritual ideas, a lot of Eastern philosophy, you know, Hinduism, yoga, stuff like that coming in, Buddhism coming into our country in the 60s. And um, uh, I think, yeah, 60s. And by the time I came around, you know, uh, LA was full of Eastern philosophy stuff and lots of temples and things have gone up. Um, and so my mom got into that and first temple we went to was Krishna temple. Holy crap. Wow. I think we only went there once. <laughs> Whoa, that was crazy. Watching all these people jumping up and down, you know, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram. It's crazy that I remember it. <laughs> but anyway, they're all jumping around in these robes and uh, orange and yellow robes and the guys had their head shaved and the little ponytail and it was weird. It was very weird. And at that time we were vegetarians. I was a vegetarian kicking and screaming. I loved McDonald's hamburgers. Let me tell ya. Mm, those things were good. And uh, I, you know, I was six years old. Of course they're good. <laughs> um, and now I can't stand them. I don't want any, anything to do with a McDonald hamburger. But at, at the time, I did not understand vegetarianism. Why do we want to be vegetarian when, you know, McDonald's is so good. Uh, then we went to Self-Realization Fellowship Temple. That's Paramahansa Yogananda's temple, ashram, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's where I learned about yoga and meditation and the whole idea of being a vegetarian. Why? Why do we want to be a vegetarian in the, in the, on that spiritual path? And it made sense to me. And after that, you couldn't pay me to get me to eat meat because I understood it. And that was, that's the key thing for me as a child. And even today, if I don't understand it, I ain't going to do nothing. I have to understand why. Um, so uh, we also got into IYI, which is uh, Integral Yoga Institute, which is Sri Swami Satchitananda. And I was initiated at eight, eight years old, initiated to him to be his disciple. Uh, and, and so that was interesting, but it was not the same kind of disciple as you would see in India um, because us Westerners just, you know, we don't live in the temple. We live in our house and we go to work and we pay our bills. So we don't spend a whole lot of time in the temple listening to our guru and our master. But anyway, so my upbringing was very spiritual. I went to a private school for first and second grade and learned, uh, well, yeah, learned more about yoga and, and meditation. And our morning recess was to practice yoga and meditation. And then, you know, then we had lunch and then we had an evening, uh, evening, afternoon recess where we played. Um, so that was very, very strong spiritual foundation for me. And then, um, 
my mom got involved with a guy and we moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado. And my grandparents were living there at, at the time, which is weird because they're from Missouri. So anyway, um, my mom and this guy broke up and she ended up going back to LA, but I asked to stay with my grandparents because I didn't grow up with them. So I didn't really have a, a lot of time getting to know them. And I thought, oh, this would be cool. And so I moved in with them and they were Baptists and grandma was very austere, very disciplined, very, you know, she wore the pants and don't make grandma mad because you will regret it. Uh, that kind of environment. But she, when I first moved in, she was, she was nice and everything. And then one day, uh, after going to church several times, I decided to ask, you know, how do you become a Christian? Because I'm spiritual, you know, this looks spiritual to me. Um, and she called the pastor up. He came over and said, you know, your ego is sitting on your throne of your life. And when you accept Jesus as your savior, your ego gets pushed off the throne and Jesus sits on your throne to guide you. Hey, that sounds like gurus and masters and, you know, that I had been... Uh, taught before so that sounds kind of cool so I did it and um, after that my grandmother changed it was the weirdest thing uh, she was accusing me of things that I didn't do she didn't believe me so she stuck a bar of soap in my mouth uh, a couple of times she didn't believe me and slapped me across the face told me I was lying so this was very traumatic for me you know, because my mother always trusted me. We always had a really good relationship. She explained things to me so I could understand them. And I had no trouble obeying her except for cleaning up my room because I didn't understand why. Why do I need to clean up my room? It doesn't make sense to me. So I always had trouble with that. And now today I have trouble with organizing my stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, I got into Christianity and it did not feel good. And then um, things were not working out with my grandma and me, and it just, I, I had to go. And so I talked to my mom, and she flew me back out to L.A., but she was going through depression and some stuff on her own. Uh, so she, uh, uh, she arranged for me to move in with some friends of ours who were also Christians, but they were evangelical, fundamental Christians. Woo! <laughs> Talk about loony bin, loony bin. Okay, so yeah, um, I spent six years with them, and I believe I had, I came out, I know I came out with a little bit, not a lot, a little bit of PTSD, because it was just intense, and I was going through puberty. I, I was a um, 10, 11. 10 with my grandparents and I think 11 with my foster parents. Uh, so it was really intense for me. And um, then I got married and I should not have. And that's a long story. That's another video. But um, I was weak. I was, I was in need of security, somebody to help me to make sure I don't, you know, because I was, I was moving out on my own and going to school uh, and I was scared to freaking death because I had been so protected and so um, not taught how to live out in, in the world outside of Christianity that I was not ready to be out on my own, but I had to do it. I had to get out of there. Uh, and so I got married because I was scared. And so six years later, after getting married, six years later, oh no, it was, it was before that, it was about 93, 1993, I was, uh, had an enlightenment experience where I just decided I cannot follow Christianity. I cannot follow a God that loves his children so much that he sends them to hell because they don't believe correctly. Whether they have ever been exposed or not, they go to hell. Period. End of story. There's no mercy, nothing. And I just, I couldn't handle that. I could not accept that. I'm not going to follow God who's going to be that way. And so I let it go. And I said, okay, where do I go now? And what came to mind was metaphysical store. 
okay. And I so I looked it up in a phone book, and I found one pretty close, and I started hanging out there. Uh, I found some books, and I started to talk to some people. I picked up uh, books on um, Native American spirituality, like Medicine Wheel stuff, and some Wicca books. Uh, Cunningham was one of my first ones. My, uh, I told my mom about it, and she sent me Drawing Down the Moon, and uh, I think another book. I, I can't remember it. Um, but I started just getting into these books about witchcraft and different traditions of witchcraft, and just it clicked for me. And so I started just practicing little things on my own. Oh, data usage alert. Lovely. We're, I'm running out of data. So I'm going to wrap this up. So then I just, it just keeps growing. It keeps growing. And I started teaching it and I just, oh my God, I just love this. I love it. And so I, um, I can't stop. I'm just, I, I, I live and breathe it. I have a cabinet full of herbs and oils and things that I put together whenever I want to do a spell. Um, I do spell jars. I have altars and, uh, I just, uh, in, in any tradition, no, um, I told somebody, somebody asked me, what tradition do you follow? I said, none. Oh, you're eclectic. Okay. If I'm eclectic, I have to at least follow two traditions and mingle them together. And I'm just not really there. Um, I've studied different traditions, but I kind of go on my own, really. Uh, I prefer to work with spirits that are local rather than deities like Greek gods and goddesses and stuff like that, or Egyptian or Nordic or whatever. I prefer to keep it local here. So I talk to my trees and uh, fairies, and there are spirits here, local spirits here. And um, I, just, I just love that. Um, so I don't follow a tradition. I don't like rules. I don't like somebody telling me this is the way you cast a circle. No. I'm going to cast a circle if I want to cast a circle. And guess what? I don't, a lot of times I don't even cast a circle. So it's my own thing. And that's, um, but it, it could be considered eclectic because it's a mishmash of, of what everybody else does too, as well. So there you have it. That's my background and um, non-traditional, I guess. I'm just kind of doing my own thing and using my intuition. And um, so... I want to know where you got the idea that witchcraft was your spiritual path. So um, I guess that's how you do these video, video responses. Hopefully I did it right. Okay, love you all. Do something today that makes you feel good and brings you joy. And until next time, blessed be.